but just hoping I could help save you some heartache, some grief, and definitely some money. I think I honestly would have saved out of that 55,000, maybe 10 to 20,000 if I knew then what I know now. So pretty. So this is my number one. Hi guys, Laura Sparkles here. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you like perfume, make sure you hit that subscribe button and welcome back all of my loyal, lovely subscribers. I'm so appreciating your comments and you guys are just too sweet and I also feel like connected, like you're on this journey, you get it. <laughs> you're here with me. I've heard from so many of you that the whole lockdown situation got to you too and you know, you also grew your collection immensely. <laughs> so it's really fun to hear your stories and connect with you in that way. So keep them coming. And if you don't know me, you might have missed, I did this huge $55,000 haul video. I'll actually link it for you here. And it all happened so quickly, you guys. It was like 10 months, now maybe 11 months ago in that time frame. I just went nuts with perfume buying, bottles, samples, discovery sets, decants, uh, everything, backup bottles, you name it, I bought it. <laughs> it was like, I was a monster, I don't know what happened, something took over me, and I learned so many things along the way. I've been a big fan of fragrance for a long time. I actually, when I remember my first trip, I went to Paris in 2006 and got to visit the Frederick Mall Boutique then and got my first niche bottle. So that's kind of when it all started. But up until the last year, I'd have maybe five bottles on hand at any time. <laughs> so instead, now I had, starting this journey, 172 bottles. Currently, I'm at 154. So if you don't know my story, my goal is to get down to 50 bottles, full-size bottles of perfume, not including backups. <laughs> or samples or what have you. During this time of incredible psycho spending <laughs> that I did, I learned quite a few things along the way and I wanna share what I've learned during this time with you and just hoping I could help save you some heartache, some grief, and definitely some money. I think I honestly would have saved out of that 55,000, maybe 10 to 20,000 if I knew then what I know now. So I wanna share this with you and I want to give you five tips to, you know, building a perfume collection and what to keep in mind when spending. And I'm hoping this will give you value, even if, you know, you're a veteran on this journey and you're super into fragrance, I'm hoping this will still give you value. And I'm sure it definitely will if you're new on the fragrance journey. Okay, before we jump into these five tips, I would love for you guys, one of you lucky winners will win this little Chanel bag slash cosmetic bag that I include a little chain with so you could wear it as this lovely little red bag um, and it comes with three lip glosses and I'm doing a contest now until May 21st 2022 it closes the day before my birthday my birthday is May 22nd I'm announcing a winner <laughs> and all you have to do is go find that handbag video actually I'll link it for you here super simple instructions on how to enter no purchase necessary <laughs> all you do is subscribe to this channel you're already here easy peasy and then you hop over to my instagram and tag a friend for every tag you do you get one entry and you could do as many tags as you'd like so i really hope you win and i'd love to share i love giveaways you guys and i love to give people things <laughs> both of those things so i'm really excited about this i really i don't know i just feel like i want to share the love and the joy and all these like lovely things I find I'd love to share with you so good luck okay so I know we're probably at all different points in this journey on and with our collections of perfume I'm sure there's many of us that have been doing it for years and years and years and years and others that are just starting into fragrance and like really getting into it first tip I want to give is to figure out your end game with your collection and what do you love fragrance for and how do you want to experience these different bottles that you buy and have on hand. Do you want to, for instance, do you want to just smell the perfume out of the bottle? Do you like find joy in that? Is it something instead that you just want to wear and enjoy how you smell and, you know, want to smell sexy for others or, you know, a, a boyfriend or girlfriend, a husband or wife, etc. <laughs> it's also important to look at how you like to wear your perfumes. Do you like to have separate collections for each season? For me, I definitely love to celebrate each separate season with 
different perfumes and fragrance and so that's something that's important to me even if I had a very small collection I would still want to have enough variety to swap things out according to the time of year we're in and the weather and, and that kind of thing so that's really important to think about and then also when and where do you wear fragrance do you wear fragrance to the gym is it just for date night do you wear it you know to bed at home when you go get the car washed around kids are you a teacher <laughs> You know, in the office, definitely need to think about these different places you'll be wearing perfume and or and or fragrance and how that'll impact your choices. I also like to think about how much money and what your budget is, and I know this can be tricky, like when you're in the spur of the moment and the latest and greatest thing is coming out and you're so excited to try it and you have to have it and like all of those feelings take hold of us, it can be very tricky but super important to think, and maybe it's not like a budget for each month or each quarter each year, but it could be that what is your overall budget for your entire collection? And maybe that will give you more room within that structure to have freedom and flexibility of what you're going to buy and for what occasion. And so I guess this first tip is really just about envisioning your entire collection and kind of thinking in your head. And I know it might feel hard, like how am I going to know what my collection will look like <laughs> or what I want it to look like when you're just diving in, for instance. But I think it's important though to have at least some parameters and structure around what you're doing and trust me do what I say not as I do <laughs> I did not do this and again this is how I came up with these tips what I would have wanted to have known when I started on this journey it probably wouldn't have been fifty five thousand dollars <laughs> maybe ten thousand that's probably a safer number and something I'd feel better about so yeah, so that's the tip number one, is really just to take a big step back and look at what you want to create for your collection. I'll give you a little example too of what happened for me. So I, when I first started, was like determined to find my signature scent. And I would smell a perfume and I would think, oh, this is so much like me, I have to have it. And then I would buy it. And then I would dismiss anything else that I didn't think smelled like me. <laughs> and I wasn't factoring in seasons or any of these other things that we're thinking about. It was like, what's my signature scent? <laughs> and so I, again, like my first experience at Frederick Mall left this lovely warm feeling in my heart. And so I wanted to check out more of their line now, you know, some almost 20, 15 years later. And so I bought the one of their little essentials collection, a little discovery kit. And one of them in this kit was Musk Ravager by Frederick Mall. And I fell in love with this thing. Oh, it's so good. It, I put it on my skin and I just had to have myself. <laughs> it was like, it's like the sexiest thing I've ever smelled. And I just fell in love with it instantly. It was so, it's so sexy. It's so <laughs> seductive. It's like so delicious. And and this again was like back at the beginning of this whole craziness that happened. And I put it on my skin and I loved it. And the next day though I thought, you know what, I can't have a bottle of this because it's not me. It's not like this light lovely floral <laughs> that I do so well, that performs so well on my skin. And I was also testing, this was back in the summer of last year, so I made a bunch of mistakes with that. Like I could very easily have a bottle of Musk Ravageur. I wore it in the winter this last year and loved it and it felt so sexy and it came across kind of masculine on my skin. You know, to me, no gender with fragrance. You know, you can do, anybody could do any scent if they want to. Now I get that and I didn't then, maybe as much. So what I did as I was going through this process, even with this discovery set, I would just make such a rapid decision, like, yes, no, yes, no, like, this is mine, this is mine, this isn't mine, this isn't mine, you know, just crazy rapid decision. And perfume is really more about dropping into our bodies, connecting with our heart. And this sounds crazy, but it is. It's there's this whole experience that can be offered every time we smell a lovely perfume and I was skipping that whole part. <laughs> I was kind of keeping it very surface level and and just skipping through all these perfumes that I now have come to find I absolutely love. One for instance was Iris Poudre. So now I have a full-size bottle. I adore this. This is the most beautiful Iris. So lovely, like bedtime, springtime, 
I love it. And in this first discovery set I had, I totally dismissed it. Cause like, nope, it's not bright enough for me. You know, whatever I had in my mind as I was like searching for the signature scent. So I ended up giving away that discovery scent to a girlfriend <laughs> when I wasn't really done with them and wasn't taking time and really looking at what I wanted this collection to look like. So that's tip number one. Please learn from me. <laughs> tip number two might be kind of a no brainer for those of us who have been around for a while and those of us just getting started though, this might be something new. I'm guessing if you're happening upon this video, you're probably into fragrance, you know, quite, quite a bit. So I doubt this applies to you, but just to make sure, I just want to cover all bases and fast forward through this if you know about this, but tip number two is to set up a Fragrantica account. And again, basic, I get it. If you're just starting out. So if you don't know, Fragrantica is an online web-based app, basically, where you could set up your own little account and it's basically just a perfume, virtual perfume trays and shelves and a way for you to see your collection, see your perfume count, make lists of, you know, maybe summer fragrances, winter fragrances, vanilla fragrances, whatever it is that you want to track, you could do that. You can see all the notes there, you can read reviews, you can leave reviews, you can make personal notes of how things are wearing for you and what your experience was and, and find comparable scents, find things that people like that's related to the perfume that you're looking at. So it is so important. Like it offers so much knowledge and, and for me, I think the most value comes from tracking my own collection. And especially if you're going to put some limitation like for me, I want to get down to 50 bottles. So I don't want to sit there and count a bottle every time I sell or <laughs> buy something new like that would be maddening so I just have it in Fragrantica you know all my bottles set up and I know how many I have at any given time so it's just really a great tool to help you keep track of things and to explore and learn and like I've learned the other day that you can search based on the color of perfume bottle like maybe you want to have a very aesthetically pleasing collection that are all pink or all purple or you know who knows whatever it is it really just helps to plan and experience and Right? I mean, come on, you guys, comment below if you have a Fragrantica account. <laughs> it's just so important. It's really important. And maybe let me know what your favorite feature is. You have to have a Fragrantica account if you are serious at all about this hobby. It'll just change your world if you don't have one already. <laughs> so that's tip number two. Tip number three is there's some debate around this in the community, but I would say tip number three for me are to get samples of things. And there's caveats to this, and I'll go into that more, but in general, it's so much easier to spend five to 10 to $15 on a sample or decant, and usually you'll get enough wear to know whether you want to move forward with the fragrance or not, and you know maybe enough where you can wear it a couple, three, four times in different seasons. And I mean, when we have collections this big, are we really gonna wear all of these bottles? and all the samples, like probably not. <laughs> so it's so important. And oftentimes you won't even get through the samples. Even if it's a, a fragrance that you think you absolutely love, it might be that the sample just sits there unused. So it'll just save you so much money and so much heartache because when you get a full bottle, yes, you can sell it later. However, most of the time there are fees. It takes time, your own precious time to photo and interact with the people that are buying and shipping and and then usually I like to be very generous and give lots of samples and things when I sell perfume and I love doing that like don't get me wrong I love that part of it and <laughs> but if you're on a budget that costs money too so it is just so much easier to do samples and decants and what I would say is you probably do not need to do that if it's under a certain price point for a full bottle. Like anything $50 and below, I wouldn't even consider that unless the samples are freebies or, um, I don't know, a friend is going to decant something for you or, you know, something like that. But if it's not, if it's anything above $50, maybe $75, please get a sample. <laughs> please. <laughs> That's tip number three. <laughs> And tell me, I know this is like kind of heated. I always hear both sides of the stories about buying samples, but I, cause it gets so at this level, like for me personally, I feel like it's so wasteful to have all these full size bottles and I could very easily for like half of this, just have samples and probably never finish the samples. 
<laughs> so that's legit. That is true for me. Okay, my fourth tip would be to consider where you're buying these things from. <laughs> this is probably the biggest one, honestly, and it could really change the game. Like, you could save half or more, you know, of the money that you would normally spend. Okay, so one of the places that I like to buy from, and now that I know what I'm doing, I guess it's a little less scary than it was at first, but I definitely like to go to some pre-loved sites sometimes, and typically when I'm buying things that have been discontinued. So Mercari is one of the sites I like to go to, and it's a place where I have a store and where I do most of my selling if I'm not directly selling to people through my Instagram. Um, and you can, if you there's anything you have your eye on from my collection, follow me at Laura Sparkles underscore, send me a DM. I also have a little perfume highlight on that page where you could see what's actively being sold. And I mean, I'm gonna get rid of two thirds of my collection, so <laughs> there's a good chance if you find something you like, it might be there. And you guys, a lot of you might know some of these, but many people don't. I see on these Facebook groups and boards and in the community that I guess asked a lot about what's legit and what's not legit. So I'm gonna just break it down for you. <laughs> and I've had really good luck, especially with Mercari. I think that people there are most of the time legit and maybe 80% <laughs> if I had to put a number on it. There still are fakes out there, especially for some of the more popular fragrances. So be very careful. I myself have come across and purchased two fakes from Mercari and luckily I know the scent and both of those fakes were Chanel number no. five so it was very easy to detect because I know the scent so well and I remember one of them actually had little particles floating in the the juice and the cap wasn't going on over the atomizer correctly it wasn't like clicking in like oh I have a Chanel here I'll demonstrate <laughs> so see this cap it'll click in and it was just kind of like loose. It wasn't making that click noise. So that was a big giveaway. And you can just see like, it's kind of obvious when you look at the bottle, but if you're kind of new into the world, you might not know if it's a fake or not. You could also go to, to Poshmark. I've never shopped from there personally. I've actually heard some horror stories about people selling items that they got scammed on the other end where the buyer claimed it was fake even though it was authentic and then Poshmark supported the buyer and the seller lost the item and the money. So there are horror stories like that. I found that Mercari, the two fakes that I did buy, they refunded my money. One of them, the seller just canceled the order because he knew like, oh crap, I got caught probably. <laughs> and so I didn't have to ship it back. And then the second woman, I think she was selling a pre-loved person she had made and she had no clue that it was inauthentic. So these things can happen. And again, like the second seller, I think she was coming at it with good intentions. She didn't know, honestly, that it wasn't authentic. So you just have to be careful when you're shopping from these places and do your due diligence. I mean, all you can do really are read the reviews and look at the pictures, look, are there, you know, batch codes on the bottom of the bottles? Are there photos of the caps and are they the same as they should be? Like you just have to know what an authentic bottle looks like because this is definitely a sector of the market that are plenty of fakes, <laughs> like plenty of them. So please be careful. I will say that when you're shopping pre-loved. I would say out of these sites, the only one that I do tend to buy from is Mercari and sometimes I'll buy direct from a Facebook group. Um, but even then it just feels, I like Mercari because they have there's some backup. If something goes wrong, they've backed me up very well. And you don't really have that on the Facebook groups. You're kind of just taking somebody's word for it and the group's word. So I guess there, there's that social component still on the Facebook groups where you can look to see what other people are saying about the seller. And maybe you've seen them in the group for some time. So you have that trust built. But personally, honestly, out of anything pre-loved, 99% of the time I'm at Mercari. <laughs> So, and again, I do have a store there. The link is in the description if you want to check out my store. Okay, the second place I buy from, and probably the most at this point, this is what I did not know at the beginning. And this is what would have saved me so much of my money <laughs> if I were going to do it again, is to shop at the gray market sites. And these are places like, and everybody asks, is this is legit? It is legit, or a fragrance. Probably one of my favorites to 
shop from if they carry the fragrance you're looking for. <laughs> so it does you well because their inventory is so low and they just get batches in and they'll be gone forever typically. So if there's something you're really looking for or you're just in the market, I mean, I'll just go in and, you know, pop in every week or two, especially when I'm actively buying. Right now I'm kind of decluttering, so it's a little different story right now. But I'll go in and just double check anything new, you know, what they got in because their prices are almost guaranteed to be the lowest aside from maybe if you get it secondhand. But then you have the guarantee that it's authentic too and new and all of those things. So Aura Fragrance, my first favorite gray site. I probably secondly shop from Fragrance Net the most after that. And this is one that you will want to make sure you get that 35% discount <laughs> because there's such a game with Fragrance Net. Like if you, I think if you directly go to Fragrance Net and go in and type a fragrance you're looking for, it'll just give you like a 25% coupon. I forget how it works, but if you search on Google and then click in, it'll apply this 35, 37% coupon. So there's a little strategy to it. <laughs> Not much though, but they do seem to have a pretty good selection and a good inventory. So that's another one. Fragrance X, very similar to Fragrance Net. Um, there's, you know, Fragrance Buy. .ca. I think it's a Canadian company. I've never shopped from them, but I hear really great things about them. And actually, one of our fellow YouTubers here, Beauty Meow, just did a video on her favorite discount sites. And so I would check it out. She goes totally into in depth on this, so I don't really need to redo what she said. I agree with everything she said. She did mention one site that I'd never heard of, which is Maxoroma. So aside from that, <laughs> I'll actually put an image of her here so you can see which video to look at when you want to check it out. But she really went in depth and I agreed with everything she said. So if you don't know about the gray market site, I'm not going to bore you here with these details, but just go over and check out her video. She did a great job. So in her collection, I thought my collection was big at 172. She has a thousand, one zero zero zero, a thousand bottles of perfume. I think she just did a video like celebrating her thousands her, how do you say that? Thousandth bottle <laughs> of, of fragrance. So check her out. She's super knowledgeable. She's one of the only YouTubers that actually talks about Erin. Actually her and um, The Scented, Yana at The Scented, those two also talk about Erin. So they have a, a soft spot in my heart. <laughs> so check her out. Okay, another place you'll want to buy your fragrances from is from retail stores. However, never pay full price <laughs> because unless you're jonesing and craving and it's the only place you can find this fragrance and you've checked directly at the perfumery site and the all the gray sites and mercari you know and all your other efforts are exhausted otherwise please please just wait <laughs> for for a discount or a sale so places that i love to shop neiman marcus is one they do fantastic sales and a lot of times it'll apply to beauty you have to make sure it's you know beauty and fragrance um are applied for those sales, you know, Saks, Sephora obviously is another one and just wait for their sales, their VIB sales, the sales at the end of the year. You have to wait. Otherwise, it's just like you're throwing money down the drain. So if you're gonna buy from retail, please wait for a sale. <laughs> and something I like to do, I have a good relationship with my sales associate at Neiman Marcus. That helps quite a bit. And at Saks, um, not that I go there in person, there's not really one near me, but I have someone that will contact me, a sales associate that will contact me through email when there's big sales. So just get on these lists of these different department stores and retail stores and get to know when their sales are happening and wait. It takes some patience and <laughs> some discipline, but please wait for the sales. Please, it'll make your life so much better. <laughs> and it's also great, I mean, if I could choose, I would definitely always want to shop directly at retail stores and maybe even the perfumery houses directly. I'll talk more about that next. But a great thing about going directly to department stores is you really get to sample a great deal of them and and try them before you buy. And the return policies are usually the best and easiest. Um, on the gray sites, a lot of times, like for instance, Fragrance Nut, I've had no trouble returning things, but it does require a call in and it's kind of a pain in the butt. And actually once to go back to that topic, I've had nothing but good experiences from fragrance net, except once I ordered a bottle of Mon Parfum Cristal from Amicola and they sent me Mon Parfum and 
they're completely two separate fragrances and I didn't get it till it was too late. I was just like new to this world. I didn't know what I was buying and <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. This does not sound like the reviews. There's no rose and gourmand notes. It was, I mean, there might've been rose, but it was this big patchouli bomb that I could not do. <laughs> and so if I would have known that now, I definitely would have known, you know, to return that. But in other cases, like maybe once or twice a bottle has broken during shipment and they've replaced it or, you know, they're just good about that. But they're not as good as, for instance, Sephora or Neiman Marcus or Saks or one of those stores. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to everything, right? But definitely if you're going to shop retail, wait for the sales. Another good tip, you know, while you're at these department stores and while you're at, or Sephora or at these different retail outlets, you can sample all the perfumes there, but then go back home and find them pre-loved or on the gray market. <laughs> so sorry, retail stores. It's what I've done for many, many bottles of perfume. Even I've discussed my Ubigant Keke Flor Royale and I found it at Neiman Marcus, but then I went later home. Instead of paying the $200 there, I went and found it for like 60 on the gray market. So it makes a huge difference. I like to shop and mostly just for samples and decants. Like I said, they're pretty important to me at this stage in my collection because I cannot allow any more full bottles and even you guys have only really talked about my full bottles, but all of my samples and discovery sets and minis and, I mean, I have many sample sets and discovery sizes like this big <laughs> that are like $300 each or whatever. Like I have so much perfume to go through and experience, which is a very lovely problem to have, <laughs> but it adds up and I need to manage this whole thing that I've created here in my bedroom. <laughs> so. So at this point in my life, I would not be buying any full bottles until I get down to my top 50. And at that point, maybe then I'll just rotate out. If I really want something new, I need to get rid of something I have to kind of keep me in check as I'm, you know, designing my perfume collection. Step one <laughs> that I could have done a year ago, going to places like Scent Split or Lucky Scent, where you can get samples of things. It It's so much better than for these niche things that we can't smell at the department stores or retail stores, get a sample. Cause so many times something will be hyped up, you'll buy it, you get it. Now you have this $300 perfume bottle and you don't even like it. And with some of these niche perfumes, there's not as high of a demand with, I mean, with any perfume, it could be designer also, there's not always a demand and a market. So you might just be stuck with that bottle for quite some time and lose a lot of money on it and I just think samples are the way to go. Okay and lastly and probably the most fun and what I like to do when it works out is to buy direct from the perfume house and that is so underrated because <laughs> for instance I just bought from and I've bought directly from M. McLeff many times and I swear this probably sounds like a commercial because I love them. <laughs> I think this is my favorite vanilla, No Vanille from M. McLeaf. This gorgeous vanilla floral, smooth as butter, smooth as silk. <laughs> Not that it has a buttery note, but it's just perfection. Blended, lovely, it lasts and lasts and lasts for me. It is everything. <laughs> anyway, so I bought direct from them um, once, because this is when they were re-bottling or rebranding or whatever they were doing and there was this very high demand for Note Vinny on the pre-loved market because we couldn't get our hands on it. So as soon as they released it, I just went at directly to their site and they had some really great sales going on. So I got this at a great price. Kind of the priceless things that aren't always talked about too. So buying direct from MMCLF, they throw in these lovely travel size. I mean, this is a lot of juice of Note Vini when you buy. They, you know, will ship for free. The returns I'm sure are amazing, although I never have from them directly. I spoke about in my, I think in my haul video that I bought Ylang and Gold from them in another purchase and I broke the atomizer. They did not break it. It came in good shape and somehow the atomizer, the spring came off and I couldn't figure out a way to get it back. So I just emailed them to ask about an atomizer. Like I thought maybe they could just send I was expecting them to, if they had it, the, in best case, just to send a little atomizer I could replace because the bottle is so gorgeous. And they sent me, you guys, they sent me an entire 
new bottle of Ylang and Gold because I broke the atomizer. And it's that kind of customer service and relationship you build with a brand that is beyond words. You know, it, I don't know, it just felt like such a great experience I've had with them and I will hype them up every time. And also because their perfumes are amazing, but because of these experiences and, and also sometimes you'll get things cheaper. So for instance, right now they're doing a sale on their Mon Parfum line and if you could get any, I think they're selling out pretty quick, but, and unfortunately, I just heard back from them that they are canceling and discontinuing Mon Parfum, all of them, the Cristal Pearl, which is one of my favorites. I actually have like three, I stocked up on three bottles of it when I found this out. In the meantime, I think I spent for a hundred mil, maybe $70 for a bottle of perfume. And even on the gray sites, they were going for like 115 or something. So check the perfume sites directly. You will get tons of samples. You will get all these little perks. You will get free shipping typically. Maybe they have some kind of rewards program or there's always something amazing. So if you can find if there's some kind of a sale or if they're doing um, a special or discontinuing a line, there are deals to be had. And it's just a lovely experience <laughs> shopping with them. So that's the last place that I buy perfume from. Okay, my fifth and last tip is two this is the most one of the most important tips <laughs> especially when you have somebody trigger happy like me just buying 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 but my last tip is to test properly on your skin this one's so important <laughs> it's so important it's so important it's so easy to get hyped up say you're out shopping you spray on the blotter little paper you smell it, you like it, you like the opening, you buy a bottle. But guys, <laughs> that's just like 10% of the story of what actually happens when you take it home and you wear it. And you know, you might know this if you've been around a while, but especially our newbies here, you know, welcome. And it's such a small thing that of the whole story of the perfume and what happens, because first of all, the paper is so much different than the chemistry of your skin and each person's skin and each person's skin that time of day, as a woman, you know, that time of month, uh, what you ate, <laughs> what season it is, all, there's all these factors. So please, if you're gonna go shop out, you know, at a department store, and what I would do is to, you know, spray and sample and find like your top two, or maybe just even one is probably even better, and spray it on your skin. Then go out and do some shopping or go have lunch or whatever it is, go about your day. If you like it, in an hour, a couple hour, three hours time, then go back and buy it <laughs> and test it and smell it, you know, throughout the wear and not just the first, the opening. Because, and I think nowadays, you know, we're in this different world where we want things now, we want things quickly and, you know, TikTok and, you know, all these quick little YouTube shorts and reels and <laughs> all these quick little things that we have access to. But perfume really, again, it's like, coming home to your body and living in your senses and slowing down and it's like the beauty of the present moment and of living and it's not quick let me spray it oh it smells good let me buy it no <laughs> it's we want to experience it we wanted to know the sense you know from opening to dry down and experience and love them the whole way through and it's really important to give the fragrance some time and wear on your skin. So that's one of the most key things out of testing. Also, I would say that you want to wear, and I've kind of alluded to it before, but you want to wear the fragrance in its specific season where it will shine. And not that you always have to test every fragrance in all four seasons. I don't think that's the case. I think that it's more important. If, so, you know, like for instance, I'm gonna have this Note Vani. I know it'll probably wear better for me in fall or winter because I want a heavier fragrance that time of year naturally because it's colder and, you know, it'll be too, too much glowing probably in the spring or summer. Although this one has this lovely floral component, so maybe I could get away with it now. But I haven't worn it since winter, to tell you the truth. And I love this. <laughs> so you don't have to test every perfume for a whole year before you buy a bottle. I'm not saying that, but I would test in its ideal 
seasons to really see it at its peak and to get to know what it can do for you during the right season. And I know there's some people that I've also heard that don't, you know, wear what you want when you want, etc. Yes. And I want to wear things that are appropriate for the season <laughs> because that's when they do it their best typically. So that's what I do. Also, and now I'm, you know, I do what I say, not as I do again. I'm looking back on this collection and now I know that I would not, that I would want to test for multiple days and different times of day before buying a full bottle. Like now I'm realizing the commitment it is every time you buy a bottle of perfume. It's, you're spending your money and you're making a statement that this is a perfume that that works for me, that is how I want to smell. You know, there's like a statement in every purchase <laughs> that you're making. It's going to take up room in my house. It's, you know, going to tie up resources, space, money, time, all those things. So at this point now, I would make much more conscious decisions of what I'm buying and why. And I really would just want to take much more time testing. And I'm kind of doing that now. I almost like I bought, 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 and bought all these bottles and... <laughs> And now I'm going back and spending the time and testing, but how much easier would have it been if I did this at the front end with samples and only bought the 50 bottles to begin with? Might have made a little more sense. And even though, you know, it seems expensive to buy a bunch of samples, the cost of selling perfume bottles is not free <laughs> in my time and all these things I said. So, you know, boys cover your ears, but <laughs> I've heard for women, I've heard for women, our brains change 25% during, depending on what time of month it is. So <laughs> it might be important also, if you don't like a fragrance during your luteal phase, for instance, maybe test it during your follicular phase or, you know, I definitely think that plays a part too. So if there's something that you're like loving and it's not smelling great to you two weeks later, maybe wait another couple weeks again and come back to it and see if it is doing the same things that it was doing before where you actually loved it. Um, it does change. I mean, this is just like our biology and our chemistry and, <laughs> and it changes throughout the month. Okay. Open your ears, boys, <laughs> if you close them before. Um, and then also, okay, for testing, you definitely want to test on your skin. I've actually was watching this interview from Frederick Mall and he said specifically, do not spray perfume on the back of your hand. <laughs> And I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, maybe because it's not a pulse point like your wrist. But when I'm testing, I do spray. So, and even when I wear perfume, typically I'll spray on my wrist, on the back of my hands, you know, on my neck, and then different places, pulse points and places I get heated up, like maybe the back of my knees and, you know, around my chest and that kind of thing. But I love to spray perfume on the back of my hand. And I haven't noticed that it smells different on my wrist personally. I did not establish a perfume house necessarily, so <laughs> so maybe he, I'm sure he knows things that I don't know. But I love to spray on the back of my wrist just because it's so easy to to smell and throughout the day. And even when I'm just wearing perfume, I'll always spray on the back of my hands to smell. All right, guys. So those are my five tips. I really hope you found it helpful. And if I could save you a dollar or more. <laughs> That makes my day and that made it worth it to make this video. It was requested actually um, in the comments, so I am happy to do it for you. Definitely check out Beauty Meow's video of the different discount sites and especially if you're new to the game and you want to know the different pros and cons, I think she did a really great job with that. If you got any value from this video, please do like it on the way out and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to enter that contest. I hope you win. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Okay, bye.